Hi everyone. How are you all? Let's just start. So coming to this normal distribution, can you recall that what was the normal distribution and why we call it normal distribution? I mean, this is just my guess that we are calling it normal distribution is because can anyone can anyone recall me why why we are calling it a normal distribution? Because it is so normal. I mean, it is it is extremely uh, natural in in general life. Okay. I mean, uh, any any uh, any data in the in the machine learning, we assume that it is following normal distribution. Okay. Reason being is that it is it is it is quite often. And also there is one theorem. Obviously, you do not need to know the, that theorem. That is called central limit theorem. Any uh, anyone has heard about CLT central limit theorem? There is one theorem that is central limit theorem, and it is very interesting theorem about the normal distribution. It says that mixture of any, you know, some, some, uh, like, uh, some mixture of few random variables, uh, that could be any, any type. Then finally we get the normal distribution. Anyway, there is some central limit theorem, which, uh, which makes this normal distribution mathematically proven that it is actually very common in general. Okay. I mean, uh, as far as I recall this theorem, it says central limit theorem. It, it is, it is obviously not for gate, but just, uh, just for your curiosity, I'm telling you. It says that um, uh, let's suppose there are different, different factors in in something. Let's suppose you are measuring measuring a fever of a patient. Okay, a doctor is measuring fever of a patient. Then there could be different, different factors that fever fever is this because of because that patient uh, was actually not not well. Maybe maybe because of that, or maybe there could be some other reasons. Maybe uh, maybe let's suppose that patient was uh, uh, was having uh, this that kind of hereditary disease, or or there, there maybe there there could be many 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 different reasons for for the fever and every region let's suppose is following some dis different distribution but if we accumulate all the all the different distribution then finally we get the normal distribution so there is very nice theorem central limit theorem it is it is quite interesting I, i'm not sure if it is interesting or not but yes this mathematically proves that uh, that normal distribution is actually very much um, very much quite often in the practice so it is so so important and so popular in machine learning that uh, there is no single machine learning algorithm that is like you can assume without the normal distribution i mean almost i can say uh, to that extent it is that much important in machine learning anyway so for our purpose we do not need much details we even do not need this formula there is some complicated pdf formula for the normal distribution but we do not need it we we just need to know that given uh, given any random variable x how to convert to a standard a standard normal random variable so let me just recall you that uh, this is how the normal distribution looks like where you will say that uh, that if the variance is more let's suppose you you talk about this curve the variance is four here then that is having a more spread right okay so there is one very interesting fact the fact is that uh, if you have any any normal distribution then across the mean if you just go one standard deviation away then 68 percent people are lying just in one standard deviation away if you go to standard deviation away then 95 people are uh, 95 percent people are lying how i'm calculating these numbers i have to basically calculate the area of this to calculate like how much is this see you know the complete area how much is the complete area can anyone tell me if you take the complete area, then how much it will be? It will be just one. Yes, you Yeah. And suppose you take the, instead of the complete area, you go from uh, mu minus sigma to mu plus sigma. Then, then it will come, it, it is mu minus sigma to mu plus sigma. And then you plug in the, uh, the PDF and then you will be getting 0 0.68. I mean, it will be less than one, obviously. And it is 0 0.68. It is, it is interesting. I'm, I'm not sure whether it is useful for our gate purpose or not, but I cannot teach random, uh, this uh, normal, normal random variable without telling this fact, because it is very important and interesting also. I mean, whenever you, I, I hope that you might, might have studied this normal random variable, this kind of fact before also. Anyone is there who has studied before, maybe in 12th class. I mean, at that time, we were not much aware, but we, we have studied that in 12th class, right? So this is very interesting fact and very, very good fact. I mean, we will be using this. I mean, you might use this fact in machine learning when you study machine learning at the MTech level. Okay. So uh, now instead of uh, working with the normal distribution we say that we work with the standard normal distribution what is a standard normal distribution is that like we say that uh, a normal distribution is standard if mean is zero and variance is one okay now can anyone tell me that why why it is it is good to work with the standard normal distribution 
why we are saying that it is it is good to work with the standard normal distribution because i mean why we are at all working with the standard normal, normal distribution because see why we are converting that to uh, i mean any random variable x to z because there is a table available for z which means like you ask me anything uh, for the z which means if you ask me that what is the integration from 1 to 3 you know if it is the if, 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 like this is basically f x for z for z where mu equal to 1 sorry mu equal to 0 sigma equal to 1 i mean there is a formula no this formula in this formula if i put mu equal to uh, 0 and sigma equal to 1 and i integrate from any a to b okay it could be anything it could be minus infinity to uh, to 3 it could be 3 to 5 it could be anything I do have the answer already with me, which means if I integrate this fx for any value or for any value 1, 2, 3, if mu 0, sigma is 1, then people have already done it. You do not need to do it again and again. That's why I'm saying that uh, instead of working with x, what we do, we work with z. What is the benefit of, of working with z? We already know the answers. Okay. I mean, there is a huge table in like, uh, we do not need that table, but I'm just telling you that there is a huge table and using that, you can basically just look up for that table and you can get your answer. But uh, for us, they will, instead of giving the table, they will give us the particular value, which means they will give us the Z is less than equal to 2.4. But in the table, you will go for minus infinity entry. You will go for 2.4 entry. You will say, okay, minus infinity to 2.4. I mean, it's not that easy to, easy to basically get that entry. Because obviously they cannot they cannot list out all infinity entries, right? Otherwise there will there will be infinity entries. The table is some having some nice pattern, some nice compact pattern. That is very nice table. But anyway, like for simplicity, just assume that there is a and there is an entry which is minus infinity to or two point four, and that is already there. Like I, I just picked this uh, this value from the table only. While I was making this question, I just picked this value from the table only. Okay, so there is a table, and they will not give us the table. They will just give us a particular value. And what we need to do, we need to convert any random variable x to z. How to convert x to z? We already seen it. That uh, a z which is a standard normal, uh, normal random variable, which means the expectation of z is 0 and variance of z is 1. And how to convert uh, that to x to z? We will be just doing x minus mu upon sigma. What is mu and sigma here? These are, can anyone tell me? What is mu? This is expectation of x or expectation of z. This is expectation of quickly <laughs> expectation of X, right? Very easy. So it is expectation of X. Okay. Now there is one very interesting property that is quite handy sometimes and useful uh, many of the times, which says that if you go Z less than equal to minus A or Z greater than equal to plus A, it is same. I mean, uh, it, since it is basically symmetric uh, about the zero, so it is, it is either you do this or you do this, it is same. In fact, if you take, if you take any random, uh, random, I mean, any, uh, any general, uh, normal random variable, which means not need not to be standard. Let's suppose this is mu. Then also you can, you can figure out, let's suppose this is mu minus a, uh, yeah, mu minus a, this is mu plus a. Then also you can say that, uh, probability of X less than equal to mu minus a is same as probability of X greater than equal to mu plus a. Tell me, is this, is this okay to everyone? Is this true or false? If I say for any, any X, okay, need not to be Z. This is true, right? Because, uh, because it is also symmetric about the, uh, about the mean. See, in the first slide itself, I said that it is symmetric about the mean, symmetric distribution around the mean. Okay. So if you go, uh, go any, anywhere from the mean, let's suppose plus A minus A, then these areas are actually same. Okay. In fact, uh, this area is also same. I mean, uh, you can say that from A to, okay, let me ask you the question. Tell me whether this is true or false. Uh, integration of, or, or maybe instead of saying like this, let me ask you whether this is true or false. X being till mu, and this is, let's suppose, uh, mu minus A to mu is the same as probability of um, this is mu less than equal to x less than equal to mu plus a. Is this same? True or false? This is true. Reason being is that, see, this is, okay, not this, not this also. Maybe this. <laughs> okay. So, reason being is that this is mu 
this is mu minus a this is mu plus a and this area this area and this area is also same so anyway this is symmetric so from that you can you can solve these two false questions okay the symmetricity is actually important uh, in solving some of the question and for example like we solve this question and in this question uh, we observe that uh, if you remember this question let me first recall this question they they said like mod of x minus 70 greater than equal to b now you know how to solve the question first you need to convert that to z so let me just rewrite in this in, in this plus form then we convert it to z then we realize that okay this is z greater than equal to a and z less than equal to minus a since it is uh, it is symmetric about the zero that is why these two probabilities are actually same and then uh then we said that these two are same that's why i multiply by two so see this is handy if you know that this is this is same as this then sometimes this is handy in the problems uh, problems itself okay and then we got the final answer anyway in q equal to 10 so now let's solve this question has anyone tried this question at home anyone let x is a random variable following the normal distribution they are saying normal distribution with mean uh, mean plus 1 and variance 4 tell me whether x is a standard normal distribution or not is this a standard no because mean is 1 mean is first of all not 0 that's why it is not a standard where is it for that is okay and let y be another normal random variable with mean minus 1 and variance is not given to us and then they are asking variance i mean they are asking standard deviation so first we calculate the variance then we will calculate in the standard deviation so let's just solve this question do you remember how to solve this normal distribution questions what we do we convert everything to z right see we change to z see here i mean like whatever we have like here we, we had to solve this we convert that to that to z i told you that that's the only possibility that you will be having in the gate that you will be converting things to z that is that is the only only thing that they will be asking you i mean uh, in general also that is the only only way to solve these kind of problems taken okay? so x is given y is given but there is no z so let's just convert things to z so let's just convert this and this both to z which means let me say x minus what is mu here 1 upon what is sigma 4 less than equal to minus 1 minus 1 4 is this okay is this okay to everyone is this z is this z this thing can i say this thing is z or this there is some mistake yes instead of 4 it will be 2 yes the reason being is that 4 is variance but we want a standard deviation we divide with the standard deviation so that's why there is this is 2 okay don't do this mistake standard deviation and um, and the variance don't do this kind of mistake that is equal to this thing only and let me also convert that to z so that i can solve the questions y minus uh, or plus 1 upon the variance is let's suppose unknown and that is greater than or equal to 2 plus 1 upon sigma okay so on the uh, let me just copy this on the left hand side i got z which is z less than equal to here i got probability of z less than equal to this is z right and minus 2 and minus 1 this is minus 1 equal to probability of z this is also z where sigma is what a standard deviation of y okay sigma is a standard deviation of y which is greater than equal to 2 plus 1 matlab 3 3 upon sigma hmm this is nice identity good one sir in numerator y minus 1 nahi no, mean is minus 1 na no? mean is minus 1 that's why it will be y plus 1. I hope I'm right. Okay. So upon sigma and 2 plus 1. Three. So how to solve this? Anyone, any idea? We need to get the sigma. Very easy. This question, I thought this question is tough, but coming out to be very easy. Can anyone solve this question? from here at least identity se koi kar nahi sakta kya isko we we know this thing let me just give you the hint we know this right this true false see mm -hmm. yeah we know this if z is less uh, if probability of z less than equal to minus a 
equal to z like greater than equal to a then 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 basically these two a's are same just the uh, just the uh, sign is different so let me paste this this thing there just use this and try to solve it and just get me sigma what is the sigma How much you are getting? Okay, is this so hard to do it? See, this is z less than equal to minus one, and z greater than equal to this, right? So I think, uh, I mean, you can you can compare that. Okay, this is minus a, and this should be a, right? So this is minus a, and then this should be a. So which means that three upon sigma is a, and this is minus a, which means a value is one, which means. Sigma is three, right? So basically, you can say if z is less than equal to minus one, that is equal to since it is symmetric about the mean, it, it means if it is less than equal to, I mean, z less than equal to minus one, this probability that should be uh, equal to z greater than equal to plus one only, right? That should be equal to z greater than equal to plus one only. So that's why this thing is plus one. If you even do not directly like, uh, I actually don't want to just compare with the a and don't want to do like this because uh, it it is it will not give you the intuitive feeling. If you just uh, you know remember this and then compare with okay this is a and what no you should not do it. You should do it in the different way, which means you should uh, your approach should be something like this. You should say that okay z is less than equal to minus one, which means this thing this probability this has to be same as if it is same as z greater than equal to one this has to be same as z greater than equal to one. Right, you need to drive it again. I mean, you need to drive this kind of identity again. You should not remember these things. I mean, if you remember, that is okay. But uh, to solve this, uh, I think it is better if you do not compare one by one uh, because it will it will not give you any feeling. So finally, you will say that three upon sigma is actually one, and then sigma is three. Was it a tough question? It was a nice question that I can say, but was it a tough question? No, right? I think it was. A, I mean, it was a very, very good question, no doubt. But it was not a tough question. I mean, if you are good with uh, with understanding the things, which means like if you know that how to solve the normal distribution question, it's using the Z only. First, you convert that to Z. First, you convert that to Z. Then you just compare, right? Very, very easy. So I think uh, that was approachable. Okay.